you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Super 7 Thundercat Ultimate Mumra and Lionel. Today, I'll be reviewing these figures in the following categories. Accessories, articulation, design, is it essential to your collection, functionality, and price. Once all scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if these two figures are a pass or a purchase. So originally, I planned to review all four figures at once but I just could not get around to it. It is a lot to cover on each figure, and I think the best way to do it other than doing individual reviews is to do two at a time. So for Mumra, we get quite a few items. Let's start with his plastic cape. This is the least favorite of the items that he comes with. Moving that to the side. Here we receive a staff, which reminds me of the Havoc staff uh, from Skeletor. Let me just move my lighting some. Now, Fun fact is that this wasn't in any of the cartoons, however, it did come with the original toy. We received the Thund uh, Thundranium Urn, if I'm not mistaken. And I really like the colors and how this is painted, so pretty cool item. Exceptionally detailed. We received the Book of Omens. We received the Hilt for the Sword of Plundar. We receive a medallion. Oops, there is a symbol. Yep, you can actually see that pretty clearly. I wasn't sure if you would. Mumra comes with four hands in total. And we receive two head sculpts. Sorry about that, lighting had tumbled down. So this is the additional head that we get. The mouth is open, really like the red on the eyes. And being that I popped it off already, this is the head that comes on the figure. Both done very well. I really like when I get head sculpts that are vastly different. Uh, and these two are different. And last but not least, we receive a soft goods cape. Very happy to have this, as this did not come with the original Mattel figure. So for overall accessories, I'm pleased. I'm going to give Mumra a 10 out of 10. So just like Mumra, Lionel comes packed with accessories. I actually want to start to the right and then work my way over. So Lionel received three pair of hands in total. Now, what I want to point out about this is that two of the pair of hands are exactly the same. They are all gripping hands. So my assumption is that they two hands should have been fisted, but I guess it was an error that was made. I'm not sure. And we come with, that's right, count them, one, two, three, four claw shells, and I love these things. You receive one that's done in sort of a furry look, and I really like this. I really like the scope. It could have used some additional paint, and I may take a some paint just to go over it to just bring it out just a little bit more. And you have another one that has the sort of home omens actually in it, and it's not removable. And you have another that fits on his hand as well as this one here. And then you have one to where the sort of omens is removable. I really like this. This is excellent. Then you receive a book of omens, the same as the one that comes with Mumra. However, the color is different. It's more gold and the pages are white. We receive a shortened version of the sort of omens. Not particularly happy with how the eye is painted. It's a bit sloppy, doesn't look so great. And then we have a, a long version of the Sword of Omens. And it's done, it's done okay. I would have liked more of a vibrant paint. And I really don't like the blue around here. It looks a bit cheesy. And we receive a second head sculpt. And I really like this head sculpt. I really like when we get an angry expression and it just carries out throughout. You can see that his nose is flared up and even has some arches in between his eyebrows. So I like this head sculpt. The hair is done cool enough, and there's a variation of dry brush that is going on. So for accessories, this didn't disappoint. I'm going to give Lionel a 10 out of 10. For articulation, I decided to leave Mumra's cloak or cape off. So his head is able to look exceptionally far up. That is excellent. It's able to come down a decent amount. It does rotate, and you get some pivot in it, some shift back and forth. The head is also a bit loose. 
So the arm is able to extend out about that much. Let's just see if this one is able to go any further. Well, you don't want to do both at the same time as it's pulling on this. So I'm going to say that is as far as it extends. You do have rotation. Next point of movement is actually at the elbow. The elbows are single jointed, only bending in about that much. There is no butterfly joint. Next area of rotation will be at the wrist and it is on a peg. So now with the torso, there is no A and B portion. The torso is one solid piece. So you receive zero movement here, zero ab crunch, zero tilt. Now coming down a little bit lower, you do have rotation at the waist right about there. So now with the legs, they are able to move forward. I'm going to say about that much. Backwards, a phenomenal, phenomenal amount. He's able to do the splits about that far. <laughs> you don't, this can't be. You have no rotation. So the leg doesn't, that can't be, that, that can't be. Okay, so this is not a figure that I want to break as I can't replace it. There is no rotation. So you do have rotation at the knee. The knees are, ooh, it feels a bit wobbly. Ooh, I'm not going to push it. The knees are single jointed, I think, bending in only that much. So with the foot, it's able to move forward that much, down a phenomenal amount, and you get a great amount of pivot. So for articulation, I wasn't expecting much with Mumra, especially in this form. However, it is very disappointing. You have no movement within the torso. The arms are pretty limited. The legs are very limited. So for overall articulation, I'm going to give Mumra a 4 out of 10. So for articulation, Lionel was able to look up barely any. It's able to look down a decent amount. The head rotates. And I'm going to say that is not pivot as it doesn't stay. And you get some shift back and forth. The arm is able to go out about that much. It's able to do a full 360 if you choose to. You do have an upper bicep cut right there, which is nice and tight. The arm is single jointed, bending in about this much. Next point of rotation is at the wrist and it's on a hinge instead of a peg, which it should be. So moving on to the torso. The front pretty stiff moves forward about that much backwards that much of course no rotation no pivot you do have rotation right at the waist the legs are able to split almost a full 360 they're able to kick up not that far back about that much you do have good rotation no bicep cut excuse me no thigh cut which i'm okay with and the next point of rotation is at the boot where it should be the foot is able to go all the way back pretty far forward and you get a decent amount of pivot. Also, no butterfly joint. So for overall articulation, there are some things that I want to point out, but I'm gonna save that to the functionality department. I'm going to give Lionel a seven out of 10. So for design, I think they nail the look of Mumra. The robes appear to be dirty. You can see some speckling throughout. Let me just zoom in just to make sure that you can see that. The only thing that would have made this better if it was actually cloth, and I think they should have went with cloth. Nonetheless, I won't be deducting points with that. I really like the bulbous red eyes. The way that they, they, they almost look like they have a light up feature, just the way that it stands out. And I also like the color that they chose with Mumra. I think maybe he's more greenish in the cartoon. I could be wrong about that. I am really going off of memory. Just want to take a moment to put his robe on. Might as well put on his other head. Yeah, this Mumra looks phenomenal. Uh, Super 7 really did a good job here. So for design, I'm going to give Mumra a 9 out of 10. All right, so for design, let's show you the second head scope. Pretty difficult to get on. Okay, so this head is not completely flush. Uh, chances are I'm going to have to heat it up. 
but I'm being pretty careful with these figures as they were made to order. So if I break something, I just can't replace it. So I'm going to switch back to the other head. All right, so for design, uh, this looks like Lino. However, there are some issues. And the first issue that I'll bring up is that Lino should be a little bit taller than this. I think he is way too short. He doesn't look stubby. And I, I think the muscular is pretty good overall, but it should have been on a taller body. The other part of this that I don't like is just this cut that is unanimous or unanimous excuse me did i say that correctly either way with uh, mattel figures and i know that this is super seven but they just took the mole and this doesn't look good it is time to change this into a floating piece it certainly should have been done being that super seven decided to release these again so i'm not happy with that so so, so there are certainly some issues with the proportions the colors in my opinion, are close enough. I really like the flesh tone that's used. The blue maybe could be a bit darker. And then you have just some sloppy paintwork, like right under the belt. I usually don't bring this up, but I can see it even off camera. Not a big deal. So for design, I'm a bit disappointed that this body, we've seen it time and time again. If I'm not mistaken, it is the same are mostly the same as the He-Man. And unfortunately, I don't have one on hand to compare to it. So for overall design, I'm gonna give Lionel a seven out of 10. So are these figures essential to your collection? So you have the Lord of the Thundercats and you have the main antagonist, Mumra. There's no question that both are essential. Not gonna spend a lot of time on this section. I'm gonna give both a 10 out of 10. So for functionality, this plastic cape completely restricts his right side. So with this left side, you get some movement about right there, but that's all that his arm bends to anyway. Fortunately for us, he comes with a soft good cape that we are going to change right now. So simply just hold on to the top of the head. I don't have it all the way connected, so it should come off rather easy as it just did. We're gonna move that out of the way. I have not put this on as of yet, so we will see how it goes. Before I do that, however, just want to show you that the medallion can go around his neck. Just want to just an idea of what that looks like. All right, so back to this. This should be rather simple. The question is getting the head in, and I'm wondering if I should put the head on Mumra first, and then, nope, it won't fit that way. So, okay, I need a second to figure this out. Okay, I'm back, and that really only took about a few seconds. So the easiest way to do this would be to place the cape on like so. I'm going to have to heat that up. That does not snap in place. And then just pull this over. Okay, so with the hood, you have a bendy wire around this portion. Well, with the cape, uh, I guess. Now, you have a bendy wire around the hooded portion. So you can shape it in place. You can drape it all the way over. Though I feel that it should be right around here somewhere. And then you also have a bendy wire running down on this side as well as that side. And it continues all the way to the back. And the same can be said. So very happy with that bendy wire. You really can get the cape to do some good things just to hang in front of him if you chose to so this completely allows the figure to move freely even though he doesn't move so well so now uh, let's take a look at some of the accessories so the sort of the book of omens excuse me let's just remove this hand for a moment as you can see the hand goes around the book rather well I just went ahead and placed it up there and you can actually have him hold it with one hand, which I really like. And if you choose to, you can get both hands to grip the book. So I'm very happy with that. Now, moving on to another accessory. And I think it should be in his right hand. However, for purposes of the video, we're going to go with what we have. And this is very difficult to get off. So I already have the hand attached. I'm just going to plug it in place. And if you're wondering why I didn't do so on video, really two reasons. One, I sometimes struggle with doing that. The other is I want to save some time. And there you go. And it holds a weapon. 
decently. It's not super tight. It does move around a little bit, so it may be a better fit in the other hand that I just removed. Now, if you look, the fingers are extremely soft and mine is already bent. This first one from just putting the book of omens into it. So you gotta be pretty careful with that. He's also able to hold this as well in one or two hands. He definitely holds it a lot better than that. Uh, give me a moment. All right, just, just, just trust me, he does. All right, I had to go off camera, but here it is. Getting that out of the way, he comes with one additional accessory, which is the hilt for the Sword of Plundar. However, this is not meant to be held. So with all of the accessories, uh, they work exceptionally well with this figure. So if it just was about the accessories, Mumra would absolutely have a 10 for functionality. But this torso, the fact that Mumra really can't hunch over, and that's how he's known to be kind of hunched over like a crepit old man, that part is bothersome. He certainly would have took some other hits in the functionality department. However, you don't expect this version of Mumra to move well. So I feel though, even though the artic articulation is super limited, it's fine given who this character is. As you can see, he stands exceptionally well, which I'm pretty surprised. And perhaps the last glaring issue is that when you do try to lean him forward, the head doesn't move up enough so that he's looking forward. So I have to admit that cape is really a savior. The cape does the figure so much justice. Just the fact to have two, one that's plastic and that hangs over the way that it should be, and one that's soft goods that have a, that has a fantastic bendy wire to where you're really able to put it how you want Mumra to be posed and it doesn't restrict mobility. So for overall functionality, I'm gonna give Mumra an eight out of 10. So for functionality, we have some issues. Let's start with the first one turning this figure to the side let's just zoom in a little bit you see that hole it should not be a hole right out of the box this piece broke off I mean the moment I opened the box and took Lionel out this piece fell out so it wasn't due to me handling the figure so it also stuck in here so I have to pry it out and attempt to glue it back so for the moment I can't even put the claw shell on his leg which is a huge disappointment. Turning the figure a little bit to the side, and maybe this is more of design and functionality. If you see this part of the shoulder, it is well done. If you see this side, it is really sunken in. That you should be able to see. Let's just put the light right there. Don't like that. Now, in addition to those things, there's some looseness with the figure. The hands are not a terrible loose, but it's a little bit loose. The legs are also a little bit loose. And the arm itself is a little bit loose. And maybe getting to the next glaring issue, these bodies are just antiquated. It is time that these Masters of the Universe moles receive an update. This gap to me is just hideous. It's time that they move towards a floating torso, very similar to the Storm Collectibles design. And I really think that these figures would strongly benefit from having that silicone that uh, Storm Collectible uses. So now moving to the other uh, claw shield, I'm unable to tab this on his side, you know why, so I can't show how that looks. So what I can do, you know what, before I take these hands off, let's try something. I wanna see if he's able to hold the Book of Omens. Okay, everything is just falling here. Ugh. All right. I can tell I need to go off camera just to see if this is possible. That was a lot easier than I thought. If you want to get him to hold the book, it's going to have to be something similar to this right here. All right, so let's take this out. I want to go ahead and remove the right hand. Not as bad as the Mumra. Let's place this in. Let's try the smaller sort of omens first. And I just want to be careful with these items as if this breaks, I'm, I'm sh pretty sure there's no replacement. So he holds this particularly well. It is very tight in his hand, so I like that. Moving to the larger sword. Not as tight, but still pretty sturdy, so I'm happy with that. All right, I want to zoom out for a moment just to show something. And this is the issue with this antiquated body. 
no butterfly joints, which means Lionel cannot do sight beyond sight. The danger signal, sword of omens, give me sight beyond sight. That sucks. It is just not possible for him to do. So let's remove the sword for a moment. I'm gonna pop off this hand. And now I'm going to attach one of the shielded claws. And I, I like how that looks. Let's see how the other one looks. I like that as well, though I do think I'm going with the more metallic version. Now, what would have been super cool, especially being that we get so many shielded uh, claws or claw shields, if there was one version that had the... I guess the claws sort of shoot out if they were on some sort of string. I think that would have been really cool. Okay, so now for functionality. So for functionality, I've already gone through the issues. I'm going to give Lionel a 6 out of 10. So for pricing, both figures come in at $45. That is before taxes. That is before shipping. I have mine combined with shipping, so I'm going to say essentially that was free. Uh, you add in taxes... Let's just round it to about $50 each. So now, are they worth the price of admission? Before I answer that, if you see something dripping off Lino, that's because I had to heat the head up in order to get it on. So that's just the water trickling down. So both figures come with some great accessories that either is reminiscent to certain episodes in the cartoon or the actual toy line. The additional heads do both of the figures justice. The one accessory that we could have received more, I think we could have received a few more hands, uh, with Lionel, we received two pair of gripping hands. Having a pair of fisted hands would have been much appreciated. I'm not sure if the gripping hands were put in on purpose or accident or if it simply was done figuring that in time, holding weapons like this, his grip will eventually loosen. The downside of these figures is certainly the articulation. Mumra is super restricted, which I think is not a terrible thing for that figure. However, Lionel is really sitting on an antiquated body, and that body needs to be updated. So for pricing, I'm going to give these figures a 10 out of 10, which should give Lionel an overall cliff score of 50 out of 60, and Mumra an overall score of 51 out of 60. Now, are these figures a pass or a purchase? I am not going to waste time. If you are an 80s baby, if you are a fan of the Thundercats, we don't receive much when it comes to Thundercats. We received one refresh cartoon, which was awesome, by the way, but got canceled after uh, one season. We received some terrible Bandai figures. So when it comes to Thundercats, there isn't a lot that we get. So to have new figures to have a line and a company that's dedicated to producing these figures like what more can you want these are absolutely a purchase i plan to get every single one that comes out even with the limitations that they have all right so for scale let's throw in another seven inch scale figure cyborg Ooh, pretty lopsided there Let's throw in Thunderbird. Let's get a G.I. Joe figure in here. I went looking for my Masters of the Universe, Tila. Can't find her. So here is Masters of the Universe Origins Man at Arms. So I want to thank you for tuning in to Miss Eclipse Toy Shop. And I hope to see you during the next review.